Is that six feet? Social distance. What did you just buy, Belinda? Everybody wants a Saturday snuggle. Yay. Let's go get them. Good morning, you guys. I'm waiting on Belinda. We are going to actually go on a road trip this morning uh, to look at some rams for Belinda, and it's where Billy came from. I should say Prince William. It's not Billy. Billy is Prince William's son. I am in the lamb finishing barn because I got my tube, air tube wired yesterday, so I want to go see what it looks like and show you guys. But before that, you have to see this view. It is such a pretty, pretty fall day. So cool. Oh, I kind of wish I could feel the air. I'm gonna jump on a bale and see if I can put my hand up there. Oh yeah, I can feel it. That's crazy. Yep, it's cool because it's pretty cold out this morning, but yeah, there's a better view of it. So what it's doing, I'll take, it, I'll take you down there to show you, but there's an intake fan at the very end. It's right out facing east. It's sucking in air and then blowing, always blowing fresh air down onto the lambs. Whereas before when it was coming in the curtains, I had to use circ fans to really get that air blowing around and now I don't have to use those so I'll hopefully save some energy on those. I do have to call Rex to see what do I do with my curtains now. Do I leave them open or do I shut them and just let this do all the work? Uh, so I just need to confirm what I do now that this is all set up. I'll go show you that fan. Here's my fan. And this is the new, uh, it's just a variable rate speed control. So they wired this up yesterday, all nice. So what Rex, my vet is suggesting to do is leave it on full until uh, if I get a new group of lambs that come in and it's really cold outside, he said then we might want to either turn them off or keep them at a really low speed. Uh, and that way they won't get a draft. But that's all I know so far. Okay, what I do want to do is see if I can feel this air at their level because this is where I want it. I want it at lamb level. So I'm gonna stand here, sit here on the ground. Yeah, I can feel it. So you hear that coughing? That's what I'm trying to eliminate in the barn. There's always gonna be a little coughing because animal ruminants cough up their cut all the time, but it's that respiratory cough, like the cough cough that I wanna get rid of. Can you feel the air? Can you feel it? I can feel it. That's awesome. So I would say I'm about at their head level here. I can't believe something worked. Of course it worked, I didn't design it. Is it nice to have fresh air? You're welcome. Is that six feet? Is that six feet? Social distance, bottle baby. I know you're a bottle baby. Hola, today I am cleaning out some wagons. I'm just gonna like sweep them out because we're hoping to start black beans either today or tomorrow, and we need these wagons to pick and spam. And I'm also gonna show you guys how I climb into these wagons because I'm probably the most awkward looking person when I climb into these bad boys. Mom is away today, therefore, this little nugget is hanging out with us. 
come on. Why is that not working? Is it because we're oh, it's trying to driving? Right. I'll use my I'll use my Google map. No one behind us yet? No. Piece of joke. <laughs> Technology. Okay, so we are now working on a strip till because we broke some points or something along those lines. And now we're replacing it with this, these ones. Right, Dad? Right. <laughs> Speed this up, Madre. Just in the shop here on a Friday afternoon, uh, waiting for the black beans to be ready to harvest. We're gonna probably go there in about, I don't know, probably an hour with the combine and the header and to see if the moisture is low enough to combine. Uh, that's all we got left is 70 acres of black beans and then we're into corn. So uh, it's kind of a good feeling. But today we were working on the strip till rig here. It's a six row uh, Orthman one tripper. That's what I've been using the last couple of years to make our uh, tillage zones that we plant corn into the following spring. So we go through our cover crop, weed stubble ground. This kind of rips open uh, about a nine to 10 inch zone of soil width wise uh, that we plant the corn into, like I said. Uh, we had a point that was broken on them. Uh, I'm, I'm, a little, uh, I'm a little disappointed with, you know, I guess how rigorous or tough these row units are we have them so that uh, if it hits a big stone it trips up but uh, sometimes it doesn't trip quick enough and we've been breaking the points and i'll show you kind of right here is a point right there and uh, we've been breaking them off this whole shank assembly and the shank assembly actually has been bending as well kind of getting a little curve out so uh, instead of kind of tripping and going over top of the rock, going out backwards like this, it's been kind of going sideways and bending. Uh, so it's a little frustration, frustrating because it's breaking the cast on the top of these and I'm kind of botching them together to keep them going. Uh, I've just kind of run it like this for a little bit and uh, we're trying to get it done, this fall zone's done, and then maybe this winter we'll work on trying to straighten a whole bunch of these shanks it's one inch by four inch steel um, i've been happy with the job because it makes a nice wide strip it just i don't like that whole issue there which takes us to this point <laughs> so behind me is a terra forge uh, strip till rig with uh, a multi two bin monte cart behind that you can blow fertilizer down the strip so this now over the next couple days depending on weather we're actually going to demo this out in the field to see what kind of zone it makes, we're gonna do kind of an Orthman against TerraForge and see kind of what zones we like. Um, we are thinking about maybe switching if it, if it warrants it, but uh, as you can see here, this whole strip, to, strip till unit rig here is a little bit more involved than the one on the Orthman. Uh, they call these containment coulters and I'll talk about it as we use it, but uh, our plan is to use this in the next couple days, hopefully, and we're going to compare it against the Orthman. Are you related to Billy? You got speckles. What did you just buy, Belinda? Some more sheep. This this isn't this wasn't part of the plan. Don't tell my landlord. Okay. Here they come. These are all my new sheep. <laughs> just kidding. Oh, well, you're a pretty ginger.
Atlanta. That's it. Good girls. <laughs> As you can maybe see, no, no you can't, there we are. So we are going to try black beans. I'm going to go behind dad with the truck and we'll take a sample then come back and test some moisture and stuff. We're expecting a high moisture because of how wet it's been and it's the time of year where nothing really dries anymore. At least beans don't really dry that good. So, yeah. After this, though, we will be completely done beans. Yay. Let's go get them. damaged ones. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see what you mean. See, some of them yeah, are getting squished. squished. We got some bad news. This, these beans are still a bit too wet. They're like, what were they, 22%? 22.2, but it was out of range of the moisture tester. Yeah, so maybe even wetter yet. So we don't know what to do. Okay, guys. Um. Don't worry, I'm not driving. But we are, we have given up on this field. It's like five o'clock or six o'clock. And um, we kind of took a break and then tried it again and it still was really wet. Well, it's not really wet. It's just like wet enough that dad doesn't really like pushing it. So yeah, I think we're just gonna call it a day and try again tomorrow. The reason why we're in like such a, hurry I guess is because there's risk of a thunderstorm tomorrow I don't know why I can't speak but there's risk of a thunderstorm tomorrow and this field will probably take like a day and a half to two days so we're hoping to get some done today and then finish it tomorrow before the storm but I don't know it doesn't look too promising anyways we're gonna head home and yeah that's all Okay, bye. Good morning, you guys. It's Saturday, it's actually really warm. Yesterday I started my day in a toque and frost and today all of a sudden, <laughs> it feels like summer even though it's fall. What, did you miss me? So yesterday, uh, Mark and Jess tried to do, uh, tried to start those black beans when I was still out uh, on, a, on my road trip with, with uh, Belinda and it was a no-go. I think they were just, we just can't get this moisture down. So we're hoping today will be a better day and the three of us hopefully get going at that. The wind is up, which is a good sign, but there's a chance of a storm today. So I don't know. Uh, right now though, I got my feed ration changed a little bit ago um, when I started feeding my new corn silage and I haven't actually, I didn't want to make any big changes when, when they were still lambing. So today I just want to take a couple minutes and do up a new feed sheet for Carissa and it's going to actually include a little bit of my my dry hay that took nine days to make. Um, so I want to see how that mixes and how it's going to come out of the feed cart. And if it's an issue that I might have to start using that little green chopper again. So I better uh, run and do that and I'll catch up with you guys in a sec. So I was just telling Clarissa that um, some of the outside bales uh, were the last ones we picked out, um, the fields right out here, and it was flooded right out here, so this stuff never dried out as good. The inside I think is going to be nice, but um, there's a little bit of, you know, a little bit of mold 
just on the very outside of these bales, but the next ones in were really good. That looks good. So I'm hoping it won't be too bad. And all this is, is just a little moist. There's some moist pockets. So uh, for how much we're feeding, we're only going to be probably taking a slice or two every day off this. So um, it'll mix in real nice with the other stuff. Uh, what you do have to be cautious on, I believe, is anything if it looks pink. So this white mold, um, I don't think hurts the sheep, but if you ever see pink, I believe that's the thing to watch out for. Okay, so I tested out the feed cart because that's the one thing I was concerned about. But it it did go through good. It could be chopped a little. It would maybe help. So I'm gonna just, before I commit to putting that much more energy and work into uh, the hay in this ration, I'm gonna see how much sorting goes on. And if there's a lot of sorting, then I will, it's probably worth running through the chopper. Um, but if there's not much sorting, then uh, I don't know I don't know necessarily if it's worth the fuel that I have to put in that chopper and the time it takes to chop a bale uh, I do I did get Joel to run all his knives in his baler so there's just the odd long strand um, but I'm hoping I think if they're hungry enough they'll eat it and uh, and not have it end up in their pen <laughs>
Well, you guys, I'm on load number three. It's really hard to take footage and drive and go to a, the biggest grain elevator I have ever seen um, and figure out my way around. so it's been quite the afternoon. I made Jack come with me the first go around uh, just for some entertainment value because I get really really nervous when I'm going somewhere for the first time. I don't know where I'm going and my fear is I have a whole bunch of truck drivers behind me and I screw up and I have to like do something and then I've got all these truckers behind me that think I'm an idiot so I'm really nervous my first time at doing anything very sheepish so he came with me bless and uh, we figured it out we took a wrong street and then we anyways we figured it out we did it and then the second time I went through they probed the wagons took a weight and then I forgot the weight slip and then I'm like oh my god I got up to the pit and I'm like I forgot the weight slip <laughs> he's like it's okay they called me I have your weight slip so it's just so embarrassing. <laughs> anyway, the, uh, the the forecast is not real conducive to combining beans. So we have today and tomorrow that look fairly decent. So we're just, we're taking them off, but the stems are still a little bit green and it's just making the combine really, really work. So we've got to slow right down and you're just not getting over the field in great time. But he is getting there. We're down to our last. I'll probably be able to unload these into town and actually take them home. I think he's got enough wagons here to finish the field. He's hoping to finish today. Uh, it is Thanksgiving weekend, so for all my fellow Canadians, happy Thanksgiving. I hope you're with family and friends and, well, as much as we can be because everything seems to be in lockdown again or if he has that feeling. COVID is not done. I wish we could say it was. Uh, we're lucky enough here we don't really feel the effects, but uh, I mean all you have to do is turn on the radio and you, you know what's going on. I don't really think I talked too much about yesterday. Yesterday was such a good day with Belinda. Uh, she went to look at rams and of course I ended up buying five. So uh, I have a ram with, uh, he's showing really, he's showing some st signs of arthritis. So I'm a bit he, and he's losing a lot of weight, so I am afraid that I'm he's maybe on his last breeding group. Um, and my I really don't need these rams for this next breeding group, but the January one, I really do need some more numbers. So Belinda's going to keep them for a bit until I have some room for them at home. And then I'll just uh, add them to my flock, but uh, I think that's all you guys missed. So this is the uh, Pencil Co-op. So this is our probably one of the bigger green elevators definitely in this little town there's two in this town so there's a bit of a line so there's a truck getting unloaded that's my pit right there so I this is my scale I got weighed there and they probed the sample get a sample there and then I just drove around here and I have to unload where those trucks are so one's getting dumped right now and then that one and then that one and then me my little wagons This truck was just on the scale, and the probe, that's the probe, and it took a sample out of the front hopper, and I believe it's going to take, it's probably going to stop and take a probe out of the second trailer. Yeah, there you go. It's pretty slick, all robotic. That was a long, long trip to town, uh, but we are on our last, our last few rounds, and uh, it's cleared up. It was cloudy all day. It like even drizzled a tiny little bit, not enough to stop us. But yeah, there's the last bank of clouds right there. <laughs> so it's good. We're gonna be done. Uh, I have these two wagons almost full. He's wondering if this will all fit on one more wagon. And if we can get it on one more wagon, then we can take three uh, wagons to town. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't told him yet, but I am not comfortable taking three to town. So he may have to take that load. Uh, so we will we'll see what he's saying. The mill when I left was packed. So there was trucks lined up. 
in the entrance and all down the scale and all around the scale and right up to my pit so I don't really know it's this is this is the thing we've had rain up till about a couple days ago and this is like our only time to get beans off so every farmer in this area is going like mad so anyway it is what it is I am probably gonna sign off guys it's been a long couple days and uh, just thanks for hanging out with us I have no idea what Mark and Jess I don't even know what they vlogged yesterday so I'm looking forward to editing this one just to see how much fun they made of me but uh, thanks for thanks for hanging out with us and we will see you very soon have a good one